So here we have the hand show box. As you can see here, it's the nine inch IPS with the Linux operating system, HD with 920 by 720 resolution. All right, so let's open it up. All right, so first thing we have here is we have the instruction manual, which is great because it's basically gonna explain everything that we're gonna go through, including how to remove the trims, use the screwdriver, and the whole process, depending what kind of, if you have the Intel chip or if you have the AMD version. The AMD version appears to be a little bit more complex in comparison just because it's got those extra wires. Okay, we have the operation guide. That explains everything, how to work everything with the different functions. Okay. I have to say the packaging is actually quite nice. They did a great job in packaging this, which is great. Uh, so here is the cabling here. Okay, this is going to connect to the autopilot computer. And then as this is for the Intel CPU, here's the adapters. And basically, everything will connect. Okay. We have the screws and the plate. This will connect into the car. And then finally, we have our trim piece remover. And finally, we have our instrument cluster. We have a speaker here. And then right over here, we actually have a spot where you could potentially get future updates. So it looks like it's USB-C. So let's go install it in the car. Okay, so the first step we're gonna do here is we're gonna take this panel off. So you're gonna grab your pry tool. We're gonna plop it in here. Okay, so that's the first part. That's good. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Okay. Okay. All right, so as we said, we're just going to lift this guy up. You're going to start to hear the pieces opening. I'm going to go to the other side now and do the same thing. Okay. All right, and we're going to do the same thing on this side. Okay. All right. Now we're going to take this to another area where we can actually count holes and put in the instrument cluster. Okay, so we've been able to take off the dash panel here. And one thing to note, when you're supposed to, the first hole that you're supposed to put the part here, the clip here of the screen, needs to be the 25th hole counting from left to right. However, what we did notice when we tried to install it here is that the first couple of clips here, or this spot's holes, are not actually holes. They're just a shallow um, area here. 
So what I would recommend doing is with a screwdriver, which is what I did over here, is I actually put the screwdriver inside and just make sure that is one of the holes. So then counting directly from here, from the first spot where you see the hole, we're gonna go all the way 25 to the right. After that, on the 29th hole, which is this one here, we're gonna insert the blue wire. And on the 32nd hole, we're gonna insert the red wire. Okay, so at this point, we're just gonna thread here. Okay, so that was again, that was uh, 29, so 30, 31, 32. Okay. Okay, and then from here, There. And just push down once you're in the right spot. All right. How's that looking? I think that's looking pretty even. Okay. So now at this part, we're going to turn this upside down. I'm going to grab these plates that they included with, with the screws. Blue one through. Okay. The red one through. Okay. And then at this point, we're just going to insert the screws. How many do we got here? We got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna do, do one here. And the one thing to keep in mind is not to over tighten it. All right, and now we'll bring this back to the car and uh, we'll start to set it up. All right, and we're just gonna bring this back over here. All right, we're not gonna connect it just yet, just because we need to make sure the wiring is okay we need to make sure the wire goes from here and we don't want to get the wiring on any of the clips okay so at this point we're going to head over to the passenger side here and we're going to connect the uh, wiring directly to the autopilot computer and that'll be it so at this point we're going to go to the car option here and we're going to click on safety we're going to hit power off it's going to power off the screen okay um, so at this point now we're going to go underneath here we're going to un we're going to disconnect everything under here. There's a couple of screws that you can just pry off with this. We'll use our tool here and uh, we'll go from there. Then we're also going to take this part off and right here. Okay, that's what we'll start with right now. Okay, so we're going to start off with this one here. So same thing, just pop your trusty tool in here. It pops up very easily, which is a little concerning, but it does. Okay, so it's one of these push pieces that you can pull out.
that was a challenge. Okay, so for the next part, we're gonna take off these push screws. So there's one here. Okay. There's another one here. We got two. Okay. We have another one here. Here's three. And here's four. Okay. And just be careful of the wires right here. Okay. So just make sure we don't disconnect them while we're doing this. All right. Now, the fun part is when you have to get it up into this area over here. That second one there is the one that we have to take out. So now will be the fun part. Okay, so that was probably one of the hardest parts of the entire install was actually trying to get in here to basically put the wires in and put the Y adapter connected. It was not fun. All right, so now that that's been connected, I can see here the screen has powered on, which is great. Uh, the last thing we just have to do is we just have to uh, reattach everything and make sure we're in the right spot. So what we're just gonna do is just make sure that the wiring here, which we have over here, which I've connected, doesn't, uh, doesn't interfere with any of the clips when we put it back in. Um, and the final thing what I'm gonna do, just so that this doesn't make any rattles, I'm gonna actually put some felt tape over this so that if it does move around, you don't hear the rattle, okay? And uh, well, that's basically it. Okay, so now that we've got, we've confirmed functionality of the instrument cluster, we're now gonna hook, put everything back in. And we'll do the same thing to the other side. Okay, I'm just gonna reattach everything that we had here. All right, so here we are, fully installed. And so we're just gonna look at a couple of things, which is pretty cool. Everything shows here, your high beams. So basically how this works is, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna set up maybe CarPlay. So you can swipe to the swipe over here and you can go to CarPlay directly. Okay. Now the process to connect CarPlay was actually pretty simple and actually really easy to connect it to the Tesla. So basically here you can go through all of your, your setups here. You can change, make sure your model three, you can have, you know, in Celsius, if you want to have CarPlay, um, you know, have it on auto, you can change the color. If you want to change the time zone, if you want to have the steering wheel control to be able to control some of the functionality from the steering wheel, you can have that on. And then you just have the device information, which basically just gives you some information about the serial number and everything else about your device. So basically, if I click over here, I can basically just swipe up. Oh, I'll have to get, yeah. Swipe up, and we're in this mode, swipe down, we're in CarPlay, and vice versa. It's so basically up and down. Now, what's also really cool here is that when you look in the middle here, this is also integrated with the car. So let's say you want to increase the amount of distance for your autopilot, clicking it to the right, it does show it here, like it shows it there. Which is actually pretty cool. And as well, if you click up here, okay, at some point it will show the tire pressures. Oh, it's in bar. I actually don't like that. So we're gonna change that. 
I think there was an option, was there not? No. So hopefully at some point they will give you the option to change that, because bar doesn't really do much for me. Okay. Oh, there we are in PSI, there we are. So swiping up. There we have it in PSI now. And yeah, so it's pretty cool. I have to say I'm pretty happy with it so far. Um, it's really neat to be able to have the instrument cluster showing exactly what you're doing, uh, to have the kilometers right in front of you, to be able to know how fast you're going without having to look on the side. Uh, it's pretty amazing. So from that point of view, it's really excellent. The one thing that I wasn't totally clear, but it was actually really easy to do, um, was how to connect the Hanshou instrument cluster directly to the Tesla. So that was actually really easy because otherwise, if you don't have that connected, what happens is that it goes through the speaker right over here. So you may not want that because the sound quality is decent, but it could be better. Uh, however, if you go directly through the Tesla, it sounds like normal. So in order to do that, you basically just go to the Bluetooth on your car. And then I already have it connected, but BT Tesla. Uh, basically, you just say connect and... Yeah, and then it would just appear here. You click it, BT Tesla, select it, connect, and make it the priority device so that it will connect for you. And now, anytime you play the music, it'll properly show up and properly sound great. Anyways, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you'd like to see more, please like and subscribe. All right, until the next time.